as you're probably aware, the SanDisk variety of memory cards, whether it be Compact Flash or SD card, uh, come in two sort of main varieties I think that people use. They actually come in like Ultra and all this, but really most people, most videographers, most photographers go for uh, the Extreme or the Extreme Pro. And I've always been a bit curious to know what the difference is between them. So that's what I'm looking at today. I've got one of each and I'm just going to do some pure spec checks against what their website says and a straight speed test against both types of cards to see how they each perform. This is tdcat.com. The exact cards that I'm looking at today are the SDXC U3 Class 10 cards. And I have one 128 gig Extreme variety, and I have one 128 gig Extreme Pro variety. I'm going to transfer across some fairly large video files, and I'm going to do a different file each time so that we can be absolutely sure that nothing is cached or sort of put in memory ready to be copied across quicker, anything like that. Each file will be opened fresh and hasn't been played since a restart of the machine. Before we do the actual test, let's look at the specs of the card as per SanDisk. So the first one, the SanDisk Extreme, we have a capacity of 128 gig, read speed of up to 90 megabytes per second, a write speed of up to 60 megabytes per second. And the Extreme Pro, we have same capacity, a read speed very slightly higher, and it really is only slightly higher, of 95 megabytes per second. But the main thing you'll notice, and the main big difference here, is the quite substantial increase in write speed from 60 megabytes per second up to 90 megabytes per second. That's quite a big difference, and whether it's important to you or not, we'll discuss in just a second. So let's get on with the test. This is my window for the Extreme card, and the very first thing I'm going to do is write a file to it. So we'll do that now. And I'll move my window across and zoom in. And you'll see that that has a pretty steady and level speed and manages to achieve a constant rate of about 75 megabytes per second. It's not wavering from that, it's not fluctuating at all. It's a reliable 75 megabytes per second. And there is some stuff on this card, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy one of those files across to look at the read speed of the card. So this is the extreme read speed. And again, very consistent and steady transfer. And it's evened off at about 82 megabytes per second. Now, of course, this isn't perfectly scientific because I don't know whether my system's doing other stuff in the background, for example, recording this tutorial. It's also, you know, it's reliant on my reader. But the good and reassuring thing there is that you can see that the speed is extremely constant throughout, suggesting that there isn't a bottleneck somewhere else in the system. It's basically doing the best it can and doing that reliably. So we had a, a write speed there of 75 megabytes per second and a read speed of 80, about 80, 82 megabytes per second for the extreme variety. All right, so now the extreme pro card. So we'll grab another fresh video file and we're gonna test the write speed. So what we see here is a claimed write speed of 90 megabytes per second, and we're pretty much maxing out at a reliable 81, 82 megabytes per second. Not an enormous increase, 
on the extreme card, which managed 75, 76 megabytes per second. Never mind, let's continue and go to a clip here so we can test the read speed. So we're going to drop this and replace that file. That's okay. And our read speed there is an extremely reliable, solid 90 megabytes per second. Higher than the extreme variety, not much, and not really up to the 95 megabytes per second advertised speed. And again, I stress that could be down to my particular system. I'm looking for the differences here between the two varieties of card, not necessarily the absolute optimum performance because they're going to be different on every system, every reader, and sort of every setup. So the question has to be, is the Extreme Pro worth the extra money? It depends what you're doing. If you're shooting video, my argument would be no. I don't think it is worth the extra money because if you look at the use of SD cards in video devices, they're limited. Devices that require huge bit rates, such as uh, 4K, uh, ProRes, RAW files, those kind of things, will be using a different media. They will not be using SD cards. If you look at a standard 4K camera, the highest bit rates you're ever going to see on a standard 4K camera is probably around 200, maybe let's say 200, let's say 300 megabits per second. And if we look at that, if we do a quick division, standard division by eight, that's actually only 37.5 megabytes per second. We were achieving a steady 65, you know, 60, 70 megabytes per second write speed on the extreme variety of card. That's a lot of headroom for little glitches, little errors, and problems with writing to the card. On the other hand, if you're shooting with a stills camera, it's a slightly different story it's probably then worth you squeezing every single last megabyte per second of transfer rate that you can out of your device. And if that means buying a, a card that does that just a little bit better, I would say it's worth it because raw files now are 30 megabytes at least. And that's one photo. If you're shooting at six frames per second, not unusual, or even just three frames per second, which you could do just with you, just pressing your finger again and again and again. Let's say three frames per second, you're up to 90 megabytes in one second. So the write speed of the Extreme Pro isn't even gonna keep up with that. Because that's actual megabytes, remember, not megabits of transfer speed. So your camera will have a buffer, of course, but it, after a while, it's gonna have to start offloading that buffer into the card. The faster it can do that, the better. So when you're talking about a difference of 10 megabytes per second write speed, realistically, probably more if it's an optimized system on the camera to read from that SD card, maybe better than the reader I'm using to test here, then you're gonna achieve maybe 10, 15, 20 megabytes per second more. That's one extra, well, a half a shot, one extra shot per second that you can offload onto your card. That's a big difference. For video, stick with Extreme. For photography, I would always go with Extreme Pro. Thanks for watching. If you like what we do, please subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you soon.